just go ahead and get this out there. We have uh, paused our practice activities for the day where we will not practice. We will meet on Zoom with our players uh, to uh, uh, watch the film and uh, do the things we have to do. We had uh, a couple positive cases of COVID after we got back and retesting and we suspended things for the protocols or safety protocols to make sure we do our quarantine uh, tracing and all the things that go by and we're retesting the whole team again today. And of course, it's staying the protocols that go all during the week. So uh, we're in those processes now. So we don't, if there's it, it, more there, there is a spread. We're trying to prevent that and do everything from a safety issue with our players and our staff to uh, keep them as safe as possible. So we'll do everything by Zoom today and then we'll make accordances based off the the test results we get back and the things that are going on and the quarantine tracing in which we're presently uh, still pursuing and uh, finalizing. So from that, uh, going to the game, uh, I'm very proud of our team to go on the road at South Carolina. Uh, it's always been a very tough place to play, very hard place to play and still was. It was a very physical game. Uh, thought defense, we were outstanding in the game, played really well up front against the run. And I, they had a good back and good line that could run the football. Our, our defense, the front seven, and even our safeties, everybody uh, did a great job. Got them in uh, third and longs, got off the field, third down, a bunch of three and outs, got the ball back for us offensively, did a great job. Got two big turnovers in that game too, which were huge. Offensively, um, very balanced. Uh, I like, love the, the ability we did run the football. Uh, ability to throw the football, convert on third downs at a very high efficiency rate, got in the red zone, we were able to score touchdowns, score on third downs in the red zone, which is very huge, big plays by our skill guys in those regards in our line. Uh, thought we, uh, something we, good balance with Isaiah, throwing the football with Kellen, uh, getting the chain in there, get him banging around, tight ends did a good job, receivers did a good job, caught balls, big third downs, everything there. Kicking game was very sound, punted the ball twice, had good in the average, never, they never got a return. Uh, kickoffs were good, he actually, he actually missed hit a couple, one that squibbed that we had to return, and he did a, we did a great job of returning that one. Got on that one. One he hit right at the goal line, which is rare, and we covered that one very well also. So did a good job there. Punt return, nice, did a nice job. Missed a PAT, which was very uh, uncharacteristic, but Seth had a great night otherwise, and they just continue to get better. We continue to get better as a football team, and all three phases need to play together and uh, keep developing in that regard. So get ready to go play Tennessee this week. Questions? All right, first question is from Owen Buchanan from texags.com. Yeah, Jim, I'll do. Are you uh, at the, wasn't planning to ask this, but at this time, are you still uh, confident that y'all play this week? Well, I, yes. I mean, it, 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 right now, everything's full go. We'll, we'll meet and plan on things. We'll see how the quarantine tracing and all the other tests that come back are. I mean, you always plan for that, and then if you, you make adjustments as you go. Okay, um, moving on. Um, Jimbo, is there, when you look at all the things that you guys are doing with the, the, the pass protection and the third down success and all the things that are going on. Is there anything about this team that you even take a step back and are at all surprised or did you see all this coming? Well, no, I mean, I felt we have very good players and we're all on the same page. We're communicating very well. You have experience there. The guys are taking pride in their work and they're, and they're grinding things out and prepare, learning to prepare. And, you know, you're, you're playing well, they're doing well, and they're very confident in what we're doing. And, uh, no, I mean, to say you're surprised, no. But you, are you always happy and elated when you do that? Yes, because, you, you know, you're always fighting for those things to happen. So very proud of our guys in the way they're not just playing, but they're preparing to play by watching the film and then taking it to the practice field and then taking it from the practice field to the game field. And one last thing you mentioned, I think last week you brought up the the, the rat poison thing. So uh, how – No, I said poison. You said oh, rat okay. poison. Okay, the other coach <laughs> said poison, rat poison. But anyway, uh, do you have any concern at all about – because you know your guys about uh, whether or not they're going to start thinking this is too easy and taking. No, it I, I don't. I don't. I mean, you're always concerned of that. That's human nature. Whether you were saying it or not, or they were reading it on social media, which I know is out there. You, you. That's human nature to be doing well and say, "Man, I can just whew, just relax for a second and take a break." And that's how it gets. That's how it sets in. I mean, you always are aware of that, and you're always fighting that as a coach, no matter what, if you are, if you guys are praising us or not praising or whatever it is, that's just human nature. So those things that we constantly try to talk about and address in our, with our team very much. So, so you're always worried about that, but hopefully the maturity of this team will, will not allow that to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Gabe Bach from TexasX.com. Yeah, Jimbo. So as it pertains to the news here, so mm -hmm. what's it look like from this point? When, when do you feel like you'll have a better idea whether you'll be able to play in the game? Well, I, as, as days go on, the testing comes back and the, pro, and the quarantine protocols come back. We're playing today. We're meeting, doing everything as if we would be here. We're just doing it on Zoom, which is one of the great things we've learned so we can do in the, in the film video. I won't have the practice today, but it's, a lighter, it's going to be a lighter practice today because we got back from such a late road trip 
not getting back till three in the morning. So they always cut back. I always have a good Monday practice, but we cut back a little bit because of recovery right there. So we won't have that, but we'll have the mental prepper and the, uh, the, the film parts of that. And then we'll just wait till the protocols go through and we'll make we'll, at them and work with the SEC office to make choices as we go forward. I want to ask you too about guys that stepped up. Uh, Carper had the pick when Damani yeah. out. And then Tyree Johnson's been so good. You didn't have Clemens in there. Uh, Layden Robinson came in for Hawker. What Achain was able to do for Spiller. How, how pleased are you with some of those guys in the, and we talk about depth, but it's specifically those two or three, four names. Extremely, Robinson, because they're critical places that, you know, they're in critical positions that, that impact the game and everywhere you go. And those young guys being developed, the older guys stepping up, it's huge to have that. And that's what you got to have because attrition is going to happen in this year playing an SEC scale, the physicality, the bumps, the bruises, things are going. I mean, even COVID, the situations there from Damani. I mean, so all those situations are huge and I'm very proud of our guys. And I think our guys are handling that situation very well. And, and they're developing very well. Or it's good. It's a tribute to our coaches too. Next question is from Brent Zorderman from the Houston Cockle. Coach, we wanted to ask you, since you didn't recruit Kellen to Texas A&M, what does it say about his character and resolve for him to kind of buy in and to have the success that he has had under you in terms of what well, you're he's always had great character and he, and he's very competitive. Uh, he's very driven. He's very focused. And I, I think it's maturity of him. I think it's, it's a reflection of his upbringing. And I always said, he's got a great home life. Got a great mom and dad and they do a great job with him. And he's a great young man. And, and he has a, he has a burning desire to be really good. And he's put, he's putting the time, the work in all aspects, not only physical, mental, uh, film room, all the things he's got to do. And it, it, it's a, it, it's a great sign of who he is as a person. For years, I've heard the question around here, does, does this program look like an SEC team? So I'm going to ask you now, does your program look like an SEC team? Yes, it does. We're getting the size, speed, athleticism, girth, which you got to have in, in key positions. We're learning to be athletic on and those, and those skill guys, and we're continuing to get better and better at each one of those things. And, we, yes, that's what we're turning into. And uh, as I say, turning into, I think we have. They, they've been that way. It's been a great program. But, you know, you do have to have a certain size, length, and speed ability in this league to be able to perform consistently day in day out because the size matters you know that the pounding on your bodies and how physical this league is, is is a very tough demanding league thank you thank you next up is tyler shaw from kbtx talk kbtx coach I, I was just curious what your initial kind of scouting report is on tennessee and, and what challenges do you anticipate that they present well, i say de defensively big strong front guys got edge guys that can rush 95 and 13, and uh, backers, 11 is a really good player inside. 27 is very physical, hits you. Those guys can, are very natural. Secondary covers can corner, I mean, zero and five and one, two. I mean, they all can play. Uh, cover 22, they all cover well. Multiple coverages in the defense. Exotic blitz looks on third down, bring it from different places, bluff you, sight you up. I mean, they do a really good job of mixing coverages and looks on secondary. Uh, offensive line, physical, run the football. Uh, tight ends like uh, Cheney does a great job. RPO you. Uh, quarterback can run. Backs are heavy. Do that. Uh, punting game, I think they've punted eight times and had uh, eight yards in return. So they're giving up one yard to return. So their punt team is doing a great job. They're kickoff guys, kickoff return guys. they got good skill guys returning. It's a very sound, good football team. It's very physical. All right, let's go to Brian Peroni from Gigum 247. Sorry about that. Hey, Coach, uh, I just wanted to check on the injury status. This is, seems to be my role. Uh, Isaiah Spiller, I know you said he could have returned, but just make sure. No, Isaiah, Isaiah's good. All right, Isaiah Spiller. Uh, Damani Richardson, I know he was out with COVID. Is he possibly cleared or is he waiting? No, you have to go through the protocols and the time frames in which you Is be there a way? I don't, I don't, I, get, I should look up the SEC protocols, but is there a way he could be back to play this weekend if he? Uh, he has to be a 10 day protocol. And I don't believe he meets within that 10 day protocol from what I understand from when his test was. Okay. I think, and then, I believe, I'm, I'm, no, I believe 10 days is exact. Our medical staff does. I believe 10 days on the positive test. You have to test so many times out, you know, at the end. Okay, perfect. And then uh, Jared Hawker, I know you said he was going to have an x-ray. Yeah, I mean, he, he was fine. It should be anything. It, 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 it was it's just a bang or a bruise. He thought he could have came back in the game at that time. When he, he wanted to come back in, we didn't let him. Uh, but, no, there was no nothing from the MRI that jumped out. Oh, and then uh, Michael Clemens is something is, – is he okay? I, I know his ankle Well, Michael's was... banged up, had an ankle, and actually had to have surgery on an ankle today. So, it, it, when he gets back, we'll know. Okay, so he's – I mean, at least out for he's a little out, while. I don't know. I don't – till whenever he, he can recover. And it could be – They've said from three to five, three to four. I don't – I mean, you, you put a timetable on it. So, when he gets better, we'll put him back in there. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Next up is Mark Passwaters from Rivals.com. 
Well, it looks like uh, my question's got good timing after Brian's. I was going to ask you about the play of the uh, defensive line, Coach. They uh, held a pretty good running back to next to nothing uh, Saturday. So A really good running back in the line, a team that likes to run the ball. Our guys did a great job disruption up top. Our backers fit well. Our safeties come down and, and spilled on the edges and inside when they had to. But the disruption from the down guys was huge in the game, and, and our defensive line, I thought, played an outstanding game. Are, are you surprised at the level of success that they have had, especially the last several weeks, and basically just shutting the running game down? No. I mean, they're, that, I, I, that physically, they have that ability. They have the size, speed, athleticism, and, and uh, to do the things they want to do. And that's the key we've been trying to emphasize, that's for sure. All right, thanks. Thank you. Next question is from Robert Sessa at the Bryan College Station Eagle. Yeah, Coach, if I could, Jimbo, forget a clarification. Did you say uh -huh. two touchdowns? positive when you came back is that in addition to Richardson so are we talking yes, like yes. three yes that that was it okay. we had two more when we came back and then we, we, we're going through the contract tracing and shut things down today to make sure we can get things under you know see what where things are at when under control okay and if I got a follow-up I want to ask a question about the poison I guess you know you're talking about controlling things the fact is it a little bit easier during COVID since you guys are a little bit more closer in contact and maybe don't get out too much to read us, good or bad? Uh, you go got that phone, don't you? <laughs> you still get social media, <laughs> so you can still read you and every, every comment and everything. Uh, and hey, you you could be at the top of a mountain and you're not isolated nowadays. I mean, just so you're getting cell service or you're so you're getting reception, that, that it still it still comes in. <laughs> And one last thing, since since this is the first time to Tennessee for the program, I know you've been there, and I know it won't be the same atmosphere, but anything different about going to Tennessee in your time? Yeah, they've always had good teams, good players, and loud pe and loud fans. <laughs> and when you get out of there, you hear Rocky Top for two weeks afterwards. It echoes in your head. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go to Travis Brown from the Eagle. Hey, Coach. Uh, I, I know we asked a little bit about this last week, but now that you have two games of field, what kind of um, uh, of comfort or or added um, ease has the return of Hezekiah Jones added to those wide receiver and core? Because it seems like they've uh, they've really solidified over the last two weeks. Well, they've done a great job, and I thought our other guys were doing a good job. Head just brings a lot of experience to the table. I thought the other guys, Cam and those guys, were all doing that, a very good job too. Uh, but he does bring experience. He, you know, he's a very fast guy. He can be multi-positional inside or outside. And so it brings a lot of comfort there. And he's a very good leader. He's, even when he was out, he was doing a great job of leading. And did you know, I know last week he talked to us about his uh, his, his, his fashion uh, hobbies and making pants and so on. Did you know about that at all? Or I know, but I, I haven't seen much of it. Yeah. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. That's a neat next up, next Next up is Mike Lucas from KX. Hey, Coach, how you doing today? How are you? Good. I want to ask about you guys' red zone offense. 23 or 26 this year on scoring. Last four games, 16 touchdowns on 19 attempts. The only three non-scores were on a couple of kneel downs and a field goal. How, why has this offense been so deadly in the red zone this year? What's kind of well, changed from last year? I think two things. I think when you get in the red zone, things happen faster, tighter, and quicker. You're in a limited amount of space. So the physicality of your unit is very critical. And you have to be physical up front running the football with your tight ends, but your backs taking one yard runs and making them three yard runs. And there's always, listen, when you get to that, and you get to the tight zone from the 12, 15 in, a lot of times at 10, there's always one guy that's unblocked. The back's got a handle. So the physicality of runners, ability to make you miss or do that, I think the ability that we can run the quarterback, our passing game, we, we, the balance of being able to play action or create one on ones, and our guys are running good routes, and we work on it. And, you know, I think they believe on it and they understand the physicality it takes, the quickness it takes, and how you got to play in a limited space. But I think the balance and physicality have a lot to do with it. And then, again, eliminating negative plays, so even if it's a three yard gain, okay, and the next one's a five, you're in your third and two, third and three, or, you know, if you get a four, I, I think staying in those positive situations really helps too. And if I can follow up on that real quick, Coach, is, is the improvement in that area in particular a, a sign of serious growth within this program? Yes. I mean, a lot of times when you have negative plays, all right, sometimes you get beat physically. Sometimes a guy beats you on a block and, hey, that guy's on scholarship. But if you'll go back, it's either your alignment, assignment, your technique. It's usually mental things where you lose focus and you allow a mistake to happen. And we're doing a better job of eliminating those and cutting those down. And that comes with maturity. It comes with mental toughness of, you know, not, hey, my, my legs sore, my arms sore. Instead of thinking about it, you're thinking about, all right, I, I block it out. I compartmentalize. I know my shoulders sore, my arms sore, my legs. You know what? I got a job to do. And that comes with maturity. And you, you think about it. A lot of your mistakes and negative plays 
aren't just physical. They become from a lack of focus or concentration because something's happened in the game or you just take a break or something else is hurting or whatever it is. And I think our guys are learning to be more mature that way and that way playing a lot more consistent. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Next up is Christy from the Associated Press and then Justin. Um, Coach, I just wanted to clarify to make sure um, your two positive tests, were they both players? No, one was player. One was a player. One was an off-field person. Okay. And, Staff uh, member. Uh, okay. And also on another subject, um, this season, obviously Alabama is still in first place in the SEC, but mm -hmm. there's like a kind of a different look to the league with Arkansas winning some games and LSU struggling and you guys, you know, at the top of the – uh, the standing I hope it stays strange then I hope it stays strange <laughs> well I guess I'm kind of rambling but I guess my point was um what, what do you think about the new look kind of the new look to the league this year and how, how how the SEC is looking well here's the thing if you study this league over time there's certain teams that stay up but it, it, there's always a rotate there's too many good players in too many positions and every program has its time to to push and stay ahead it, it's always going to be there's too many good coaches too much money invested too important to other programs there's too many players across this country come play in this league and if you look at it over time that thing has always rotated back and forth and there's been times for everybody to have their moment and hopefully we're learning to to push forward and hopefully we can continue to do that and one last thing um at the college football playoff rankings are going to come out for the first time next week uh -huh. do you think at all about that no and, and I say that people all oh, you got to No, I really don't because it's cluttered to me too. All I want to do is go prepare well to play well at Tennessee, then do it at Ole Miss. And then, because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where you're at right now. After, if, you, if you're running a hundred meter dash and it's 60 meters, which we're six games in, we're 60% done. Where you stand tells you, all right, you may know what to do, but it doesn't, it's not permanent. So you can, you can increase or decrease based off your, your disposition, psychological disposition, your ability to compete, your ability to prepare, all those things. And you got to learn to not worry about those things. And it, like we tell our players, if you want the scoreboard to say what it does, ignore it during the game and win your space each and every play and play your tail off. If you want the season and your record to be where you're at, where you're relevant, ignore the record at the end and worry about the next game and the next practice and the next play and do those things as a coach, whether you're preparing and do that. And, and, that's, and I truly believe that. That's not cliche. I truly believe that's how you get to where you're going. Next up is Justin Woodard from KX. Yeah, it just may seem like a simple question, but just between Spill and the offensive line for him to be leading the SEC right now in yards per carry, obviously you're imposing your will on defenses. Is that something that you can see during a game like, oh, man, okay, that they can't stop us right now? Well, yeah, I mean, if you feel comfort getting plays, when you're calling plays as a play caller, knowing you can go to certain things and get yards, whether it's a pass, a run, a player, uh, whatever it may be, is a big – asset when you're calling a game and let's how aggressive you can be how you can do it knowing if as I call them all right if we're going to be aggressive here and if that doesn't know I can get parts of this back right here and then get to a third down like we're talking about making those third downs when you have things to go to like that it makes as a play call it lets your game fall in place and then one quick follow-up how are you getting the most out of your passing game coach when we see on the outside, you don't have that one go-to receiver, so to speak, but you're spreading it out and you're, and you're still moving the ball. What, what we, the we do have a – we do – I think they're all go-to guys. They're, we're going to them in the right coverages and the right matchups, whether it's the backs, the tight ends, the receivers. We're going to them with the matchups in which we want, which we think we, we, can, we can win at. And I think, you know, everybody says you got to throw it to one guy. Well, that's not always true. You can – you mix and match guys. And I think the versatility of our guys, the intelligence of our guys to move around – and that we can, that we do have all five guys. A lot of guys throw it to the, all the receivers because maybe they don't have tight ends and backs that can catch it, or they don't have slot. And I'm not, I mean, be, that's just the facts of life. And and you know, we'll get to our guys. We know who the big play guys are, but at the same time, we love the distribution of the ball because it, because it makes you hard to defend, and it even helps your running game because they got to defend them all. Then you can still run the football also. All right, let's go to Shihan Jararaja from Dave Campbell's Texas Football, and then Chuck. Hey, Coach. Uh, hey, Coach, when, when you look at how you guys played last week, especially in a road performance, how much do you think your team has grown, especially since those first two games? Well, I think they've grown a lot. I think we're developing identities of who they are, and we're getting guys in position. We had played so many young guys. I mean, we had some opt-outs and people who moved on. And so getting those guys comfortable playing and understanding how to play on the road, not only at home but on the road, and as their confidence has grown, the success they've had. So I think we've grown a lot in that aspect. 
obviously, you know, the road has been a place where, where it's been a little inconsistent. I mean, how nice was it for you to kind of see a real total team performance on the road? At oh, South it was Carolina? huge. And like I gotta say, you're, that's always where you see it the most. And uh, being able to go on the road and, and sign, it's a very good sign of where you're, where you're going as an organization. All right, next up is Chuck Carlton from the Dallas Morning News, and then we'll go to Joe Gleason. Jimbo, uh, you look at Isaiah, and he's a powerful guy, but is there more than that when it comes to his yards after contact? He seems to have that special knack for being able to shed that first guy. And, well, and I think he, his ability to see and get his body in position and get it in a power position, not always be in the middle of somebody, be on the edge of somebody. He doesn't, not, the people aren't hitting him square, and that's a knack to him feeling guys getting the reds and the naturalness of his running ability and ability to change direction. He's also, you know, he's excellent when he sticks that foot in the ground. He can accelerate. And, and just want to ask you a little bit about the news of the day from the standpoint of you guys have done a really good job of managing the COVID situation, but you're, you're not a physician. None of your assistants are physicians. How difficult is it, I guess, in terms of just dealing with that kind of situation that's, that's been unknown territory? Well, it's, exa it's extremely difficult. And not only for that, for your staff and for myself. I'm very aware of the things I got to do, and you got to do it constantly. And listen, and it can happen to you with this without you even knowing. That's the thing about this thing. I mean, it's not, you can be safe as you can be and our protocols and things are going on. We, I think are excellent, but it can just happen. And that's, that's the unfortunate thing about it. Let's go to Joe Gleason from KTRK and then we'll go to Sam Khan. Coach, can you just talk a little bit about uh, Devon A. Chain coming in and contributing uh -huh. and, and uh, being a part of the big part of the offense? Oh, can we? I, I'm sorry. What did he say, "Can you talk?" Yeah. Hey, hey it's huge. Listen, Devon's been. Ex I've felt very good about him for a long time. We've had to wait for the right times to get him in. He learns. Mm -hmm. Tell you the thing about him: very quiet young man, learns extremely well. Very hardworking, very conscientious, uh, very talented. I mean, he can catch it. He can run. The thing you don't realize: he is strong. Not only everybody talks about his speed and his athleticism. That guy's a strong body guy that is a natural runner with a football. And bringing him in to give another guy you feel comfortable in the game. And I'm going to tell you what else I've been happy with. You watch him pass block. He knows it. He's getting on the right guys on the blitz, picking blitzes up. I mean, doing a heck of a job. So very proud of him in those regards. And he's becoming a complete back. And that's very hard to do as a freshman. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Let's go to Sam Khan from ESPN. And then we'll go to uh, Jennifer from, from the bat. Hey, Jimbo, it seems to me just from a statistical standpoint, you are a little bit more aggressive this year on fourth down going forward a little bit more. What is behind that philosophy? Well, I think we've become more consistent as an offense, throwing it, running it, getting in fourth down situations where you are and who, you know, who's touching the ball and more experience, more experience at quarterback, uh, where you're trying to do. And the multitude of, like you say, you got five guys you feel comfortable with throwing the ball to because sometimes on the fourth down, they force you to throw it to a guy. You say, man, if they got to throw it there, it's just not comfortable. I feel comfortable throwing it to all of our guys, no matter who it is, or running it. And, uh, and our defense is playing better and better. Our special teams are doing a good job. So I'm just, you know, in general with the team and how we're playing, I just feel more comfortable. Right. And I think it's, you know, again, it, it, they could go like that or you could, you could back off them. But, you know, right now, I think at those times, we're very, uh, very comfortable with doing it. Historically, what's been your philosophy on on that, on whether to be aggressive or not? What kind of team you got? There's, I don't have I, 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 all my philosophies. They can change year to year based on the strength of your team. Is it a defensive team? Is it an offensive team? Is it a skilled team? Uh, do you have to score? I mean, and the flow of the game. Each individual game has its own identity on fourth down. So I mean, all I mean, there's not been a do the thing that gives you the best chance to win the game. That's always been my philosophy. If that makes any sense. And I know that sounds cliches, but that but that's the truth. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's go to Jennifer Streeter from the bat and then Zach Taylor. Hey, Coach Fisher, how important to the success of the offense would you say the balance is between the running and the passing game? I think it's huge. I mean, when people have to worry about two different things and you've got one problem or two problems, I mean, you'd rather have one than you would two because you can shut one down and, and being able to do it running and throw it from all personnel is, I think is huge too. So um, it, it's a, it's a huge part of what we do. Next up is Zach Taylor and then Travis Brown. Yeah, Jimbo, not saying it's uh, exactly the case uh, here with you guys, but there have been some games that have been postponed because of COVID-19 throughout the year. Uh -huh. uh, I, I guess Florida LSU comes to mind. Does it give you, uh, some peace of mind knowing that the SEC kind of made a contingency plan and adding a game if need be to the end of the season? 
Oh, I definitely do. I mean, listen, our, our, our commissioner is doing a great job. Our league is doing a great job uh, having, and, and I say plan for the unexpected or the unknown is a hard thing to do. That's extremely hard. It takes a lot. And I think the forethought they've had to do that and ability to do that. And it's been done, I think is great. And, you know, you, cause you have to stay with the safety protocol. That's first and foremost over everything you do in the safety of the players, not only with COVID, but the guys playing the game, the, 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 you know, your quarant your, your quarantining and your contract tracing. And I mean, all the things that go with that. And I think that's a very hard job for our commissioner to do. And, uh, and they you know when you, if you have to cancel a game, it's cause you know, you have issues that it's not fair to the, to the teams that are playing, you could spread disease or, the, the physical part of you don't have enough guys to compete at the, at, the, at the highest level you want to do it. So I think it's very tough, but them having to do it, done it already. And what they have in place, I think is excellent. And real quick. Um, I feel like I ask you this every week because you have relationships <laughs> with these coaches you go up against, but Jeremy Pruitt obviously served as your DC. Yeah. So what's it going to be like uh, seeing him across the field? Yeah, And you hate that again. Actually the first full-time job Jeremy ever had was with me at Florida state. And uh, at the college level, I mean, as far as Division One, and uh, did a great job for us there. And you hate doing it because, again, you know, you, this this business is hard enough. You know how you feel after a loss, and you hate for somebody or a win. You know what you felt good, good, but when you're going against people, it's just hard to. Uh, you want to win, you got to win for yourself. But you hate you hate if you, if you're fortunate enough to be the winner, you hate for it for the other guy because he's your friend. Thanks. Thank you. All right, the last question is from Travis Brown for the Bryan College Station Eagle. Hey, Coach, just to clarify, so was, was the in-person activities postponed today just so that everyone could get retested and see where y'all are? Yeah, to get retested, see where we are, and the, and the quarantine trace to make sure we're not spreading it in any right rate. Thought right now because the, we could get our meetings done on Zoom and all that, so we thought it would be the safest, safest protocol for our players. Great, That's and that. I know that uh, the, the, the SEC has protocols and plans in place, but is there an amount of practice time that y'all would miss that you would feel like the game shouldn't then be played? Well, I, I don't I, – no, yeah, I mean, we'll discuss that as we go. I don't know that. I think I'm more concerned about the, the players and where they're testing and whether each individual result comes back. Okay, staff, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Good, guys. Thank you all. Have a great day.